today's video, we'll start working on the engine of my Bayliner to find out why the engine is seized. So that's what's going on with the Bayliner, and I'll also give you an update on the works we are doing on the big boat. But before that, I want to shed some light on the sudden appearance of the houseboat, which you saw in some of the shots of the previous video. First of all, I had to cover the Bayliner with a waterproof tarpaulin to prevent it from taking in rainwater. Once it was nicely packaged, I gently pushed it to the other side of the big boat. I then tied it up safely in the front and back. And then we waited for the arrival of our friends with their houseboat. Now, the reason why they docked at our platform is pretty simple. Simply put, together we are stronger. By having multiple parties using the platform, we increase the chances of always having somebody present in case of any weather emergencies and of course to shy away any burglars who might take an interest in our possessions. In this way we can take turns to absence ourselves from our boats and still have peace of mind because we know there's somebody there watching over our stuff. Next we have to go down into the bilge of the galley in the front of our boat because we'll start working on our new water system. After cleaning everything up and putting down a couple layers of paint, I started by first just putting everything down into the bilge to figure out what's the best way to go upon this. And of course at the lowest point of the bilge I'm putting a bilge pump. Before we start I have to say a big thank you to the company Whale for providing the bulk of the equipment needed for our installation. I chose Whale because they have a complete system start to finish except for the boiler in our case so that I can make sure that all the devices will play together properly. And with that said, let's get started. After taking some measurements and thinking about how to do this, I decided that I'm gonna build some kind of wooden frame upon which I'm gonna mount the various devices. I bought a 60 liter water boiler from the company Quick, where we also got our electronic windlass from. First I had to attach the stainless steel straps and feet to the boiler. Here I am cutting the first timbers for the wooden frame. This time I painted all the wooden timber with boat lacquer. Here I'm marking the position for putting the bolts to attach the boiler. And then I'm drilling an 8mm hole for the M8 bolts. I'm cutting a ramp into the supports for the boiler, so that they are in a horizontal position when mounted to the frame. Next it's time to figure out a way for how to mount the bilge pump. I want to install it in such a way that it's as close as possible to the bottom of the bilge without touching it. I came up with a solution where I'm going to make and use a bracket out of aluminum. Let's drill some holes into the aluminum bracket.
Next I'm gonna have to bend the bracket in such a way that once the bilge pump is installed it's hanging face down in the exact angle and at the exact distance from the bottom of the bilge as I want it to. And here's the finished bracket, so let's get that installed. And I'm happy to report that I managed to install the bilge pump in a slight downward facing angle, just a few millimeters away from the bottom of the bilge. Now that the bilge pump is installed, I can screw in place the supports for the boiler. I made a little bridge to connect the timbers on either side. I have to install the hose for the bilge pump now, because once the boiler is installed, I won't be able to access it anymore. And I know this is not ideal, but there seems to be no other place to put the boiler other than directly above the bilge pump. Here I have to make sure that the bolts are at the exact right distance from each other. Right now, let's install the boiler itself. With the boiler in place, I won't be able to use that pipe fitting anymore to pass the fresh water tubes from the engine room into the galley, so I'm gonna have to make a new hole. I started using oil when drilling into steel and it does make a big difference. A few more brackets to keep the timber in place and then this compartment is almost done. Next I'm gonna cut the timber for the other two compartments. Here I'm cutting more of these bridges. Once again I'm painting all the wood with boat lacquer. Now let's put the wooden structure in place. And you may notice that the wooden timbers from each side don't go all the way down to the bottom of the bilge, as this would block the nuisance water from flowing all the way down to the bilge pump. Next I'm going to install the main freshwater pump and accumulator tank. This is needed so you don't get the pulsations from the pump and instead get a nice and steady water flow just like in your home. To mount it I'm gonna have to attach this plywood plate to the steel. So that means some more drilling. Next I can attach the accumulator kit to the plywood plate.
And finally I can bolt down the whole thing to the steel. The next item I'm going to install is the waste tank. It comes with a sensor to activate the pump, so it gets emptied only when needed. Once again, I'm gonna have to cut a ramp into one of the support beams. I built this structure to mount the tank horizontally in a slight downward slope towards the outlet of the tank. Then I can cut open the tubes on the tank which I need for the installation. For now I'm only gonna use one inlet and one outlet. Now let's screw the tank in place. And I'm very sorry to do this, but we're gonna have to stop at this point. Some items are in place, a few more are yet to come, which I'm gonna show you in the next video. Now then, let's get started with working on the engine of the Bayliner. The plan is to take it apart all the way down so that we can see inside the cylinder chamber and find out why it's seized and maybe, hopefully, fix it, put it back together and go for a ride. Let's see how it goes. We'll start by removing the intake silencer and flame arrester. The air filters, just like the rest of this motor, seem to be in a pretty good condition for its age. Next we're gonna try to remove the seawater pipes. The first one came off very easily. The second one seems to be firmly rusted in place, so let's just leave it there for now. Next let's remove the cylinder head cover. And here are the first signs of the problem. Water in here is not a good sign. Now, although there's some rust, since the whole thing is soaked in water, the rust doesn't seem to be very advanced. So I guess there's still hope for this part. Next we can remove the two carburetors. With the carburetors out of the way, we can remove the intake manifold. The alternator is bolted to the exhaust manifold, so we're gonna have to remove it first. Now the exhaust manifold is loose. 
After marking the order on the ignition cables, we can remove them first and then remove the spark plugs as well. Next, let's remove the rocker shaft. Now the access to all the bolts of the cylinder head is clear, so let's take the user manual to see the right order in which to undo them. I got a big torque wrench and so here we go. A huge thanks to my friend by the way who did all the legwork on this job. Some of these screws are badly corroded, so we're gonna have to replace them. Luckily most of the screws are in good condition. Alright, here we go with removing the cylinder head. And now, finally, we can see the full extent of the damage. And though I'm not a mechanic, heck, I've never opened a motor in my life before, but even I can see that for this motor, all hope is lost. At least with the means and the resources that we have at our disposal. The big question is, what the f happened here? It seems to only affect one cylinder, and we have a similar condition on the cylinder head. The part here is rounded, so my friend suggested that it was some valve piece that broke off and fell into the cylinder chamber and got crushed between the cylinder and the cylinder head and in the process completely destroyed the entire cylinder chamber. Anyway, this is of course a big disappointment and I guess I pushed my luck too hard with this boat. On the other hand, you can't always win. I already feel like I won the lottery twice with my other two boats, so it's okay to take some setbacks and I guess we'll have to search for a replacement motor. Luckily, the Volvo Penta B20 is a very common engine, so if we're lucky, we might find one in a working condition, or maybe one which has problems, which we can solve with replacement parts from this engine. Whatever it's gonna be, the path to getting this engine to work ends here. And with that, I'm signing out, and I hope to see you in the next video.